after our video earlier, we were having a fun conversation about dyslexia, and I said, you know, it'd be fun to talk about God and dog. So B and D, you got God and dog. One letter, Paul. We got a little switch there. I always think that we call dogs D-O-G instead of God, G-O-D, because humans, we like to make God in our image, not the other way around. Not that we want to be made in God's image, but we want to create God in our image. And what is the perfect example of humans playing God? The perfect example for me of humans playing God is what we've done to dogs. We've taken this animal and domesticated and helped us evolve and go through all the triumphs and lead us to this great peak of where we're at now, or we assume it's a peak. But we've used that by domesticating this animal. And then after we've used it and fit it to our purposes, what have we changed this dog into? We have little bitty teacup poodles that are this size, and then we have monster great Danes and great mastiffs. There is no better way of evolution and selective breeding that we've done than dogs. Like we have fit them perfectly to our uses. We fit them perfectly to our whims. We've transformed these dogs into be everything we want them to be, whether it's good for the animal or it's bad for the animal. I know someone that has an English bulldog and the dog can't breathe. Like it has allergies. It's a terrible, for me, existence. Would you want to live in a body that you can't breathe in? You can barely walk, you can barely move, but you're kind of like this big muscle thing, but you hardly walk. You spend most of your life sleeping because that's all you can do. We have transformed this animal. For what? Just because we want to play God, because we want to have this power over something. And this is the greatest power that we have, is transforming, transformation. We've made God in our image. We've also made dog in our image to do with as we will, rather it be as a joke, like we see the ugly dog contest on TV. We see these dogs that are fit for breeding, and we see these dogs that are fit for bringing us food. We see these dogs that are fit for protecting us. We see these dogs that we have fit through the Roman Empire for war to attack. We found these dogs and breeded these dogs for hunting or developing or doing all these different things. There's been no greater example in my eyes of how we as humans have created and made ourselves gods, except through the eyes of these dog creatures. And I think that that is why a dog is spelled the way it is, because it's a parody of how we have transformed this creature through the ages. Mr. Schmidt, as I'm sitting here enjoying this fine magical smoke that is allowing my thoughts and desires and, and love to go out into the universe. I can't help but thinking you're all of the things you're mentioning with dogs equates to what is happening with eugenics with what we as humans have done with dogs is what some very small minority of people would like to do with the human condition. Raise us and breed us into things useful to them only. Which is happening. I mean, that's been rolling out for a long time now. It seems to have been accelerated as of late. And who knows what the ramifications of this uh, forced medical procedure will end up having over the long term, but it's an interesting proposition to see what we have done in domesticating animals and then how we can do that to the, to the human family. That is a fascinating question, sir, and it could not be, be made any better without a glass of wine and a fine, fine cigar to allow that all to marinate on your brain. Well, when you're contemplating such vast topics as this, which I sincerely hope most of you out there think I'm crazy for even considering this, because if this was a normal line of thinking, I would be ashamed to even adopt it into my mind space. So I want to be out there. I want to challenge myself into thinking like this. And I think what you said with eugenics is really right there. 
I mean, I like to think of, which is obviously a fictional scene, but Rocky Four, where you see the Russian guy taking his steroids and he's doing his boxing routine and you got the great American Rocky you know, doing it the all natural way. But there, in fact, in real life, there are people that have tried to do these things in the past. I mean, where have we started? We did start on dogs and we continue to change them, fit our needs to the ages. Even breeds that we know are bad or that are really not good for the dog, the animal themselves. Like when I think of English bulldogs, I think an existence as an English bulldog would be a horrible existence. Well, what, wouldn't a uh, existence of obesity be a horrible existence? You that can't. You can't. The obesity you can't. Of, a, of an English bulldog. It's an obesity. Like that, that is the whole thing I think of with the dog. You can't breathe. You can barely eat. Your snout's pushed in. You can't walk because you can't breathe. Like that is a existence of being obese that you can't move. You can't even work off the weight. Yeah. And you can only eat what your master gives you, which who well, knows if those are quality goods and products. Well, I hope I'm wrong, but if, if we do have a, a coming food shortage as the Ice Age farmer and uh, so many other very uh, credible people that I actually have the uh, verification that this, these things are actually happening is food shortages. And uh, one good way to cure uh, the human bulldog is uh, don't eat. Well, if you're talking about like in the reign of Mao or Stalin, starving them to death, then yes, that would be an end of that existence. But that really doesn't solve or go back to the eugenics crisis of what we're trying to weed out. <laughs> Maybe it we does. Were, but if we were trying to weed those people out, we wouldn't have these programs that are set up to keep these people constantly fed and indulged upon their whims to make them even more obese. We have mean? systems set up to keep them indulged on these because there's another system, another faction that makes lots of money providing medications for these animals yeah. and these people. So it seems like we want to breed and we want to create these programs to keep these creatures, let's say, and just bundle it into one term, in this category where we keep a subscription upon their health. And we do do that. Oh, for sure. Because we do. health subscriptions, whether you realize it or not, going through this, what we went through in the last several years, health subscriptions are a coming thing. That is the wave of the future. Much like how we've bred these dogs to be dependent upon these pharmaceutical drugs to help them breathe, we're going to do the same thing with eugenics as you have well, said. Well, to be clear, what, what, to clarify what you're saying about health by subscription, uh, what you're saying is an uh, analogous to you have to continue to have a Microsoft or Apple subscription to to update your hardware, your software, to to bring it up to code so you can survive and communicate and live amongst other uh, computer systems, and that is similar to what. The hell subscription would be if we have ended up putting things into our bodies that cause enormous amount of harm and that can life can only be sustained for those people if they continue to get certain other procedures that is health by prescription that is exactly what we've done and it's what you're talking about with the uh, not evolution, but it's a uh, well, deviation. We don't call it evolution because we don't want to say that word because a lot of people in the South where many of these dogs are bred is we live in the Bible Belt and we can't say that evolution has a thing. But if you take an animal that is yay big by yay big and weighs 65 pounds and you selectively breed them until they're the size of a teacup poodle on one extreme, which is this big by this big and weighs, what, less than two pounds, as opposed to, on the other end, the huge breeds of dogs, which can weigh 200 pounds. That is evolution. Selective breeding is evolution. Just because you want to call it selective breeding 
does not change the fact that that is the evolution of that animal. It did evolve that way. Just like Darwin said, survival will fit us. But we have chosen what is fit. We have inbred dogs from the male scion of the generation to a pup that is in that male's line, which is incest of the female, to get another line of blue-eyed dogs. And we have continued that breeding. That is the evolution because those dogs have continued to keep that blue eyes. Well, don't you? Whatever. But that is evolution. Just because we call it selective breeding, evolution is selective breeding in the wild, but it happens at a slower rate. We have seen evolution on a grand scale and to be so much faster because dogs' lives are shorter. But don't we have you, played God with them. Yes, we have. Don't you think, sir, that by us uh, breeding uh, incestuous uh, dogs mating with their moms and cousins and brothers and sisters, uh, we have uh, created something akin to the royal families that have existed forever. Yeah. And, and the... Uh, and some of the most well-known, uh, or maybe not well-known, but so dominant families in the past several hundred years of controlling us poor, un unevolved little peons that you know we, we run around the planet on, being as your how I can't pronounce his name. A little bald, skinny dude that's on the World Economic Forum, the uh, Yahari or Yawari or whatever his goofy little name is. Uh, we're useless, useless eaters. And what are you going to do with us useless eaters? And so it's a, uh, it's just a funny thing to think that these guys are trying to do the same thing with us, and in a large degree that they are. You know, where people are addicted to sugar, we take uh, these cancer, uh, we, we're, these cancer protocols that force us down painful and miserable deaths. We, we do all of these things to in induce cancer. We induce all these things to induce morbidity, uh, to induce intolerance, to do, uh, induce lack of communication. And what we have done has have been breeding the human like an animal to act like an animal. And Let me to keep you on that thought right there, but I just want to add something to it. That is the whole premise of government subsidized birth. When you government subsidize birth, you are breeding people for a selective purpose. For and sure. That is not to interrupt, but to add to your statement. Well, thank you for the addition, because. That is why we're the mystics of Texas. We're just adding to this whole conversation, each one of us. So take that, people, take that. We're just having a good time today in these videos. So I think that it would be impossible for a rational per person to come to the conclusion that, oh, we're not, we're not being bred as dogs. You people are crazy. You mystics of Texas, y'all are batshit nuts. <laughs> no way. No way. Uh, yeah, way. It's happening. It's happening right now in front of our faces. Our choices of food is so limited. Unless you uh, live on a farm or near farms and are, have the uh, extra money to afford good, clean food that is uh, organic and it is not doused in harmful pesticides and poisons. Without without that, uh, we are being bred in so sick, secretive little ways that are right in front of our face. It's a uh, so word dog. I hope no one asks me to bark anytime soon because I'm a, I'm going to be a very disobedient dog. <laughs> well, you know, you say things like that, and then we ask very quaintly for our permission to travel to other lands when we should have free permission to travel. Oh, we sir, to I gotta add, permission. I gotta add to your statement. Go, go for it. <laughs> I gotta add to your statement. Uh, we do not, uh, when we travel the world, we, 
we do everything we can to not travel obediently. <laughs> okay, what I meant was for people out there, you have to ask for a guiding hand, a higher power, if you will, to say, please let me travel. This is a book with my picture and date of birth in it. It's also tied to some other number that has been given to me by the higher authority. And I would really like to go and explore other places and cultures and how they do things. But I need my permission and I need to follow your guidelines. And, oh, I can't do this or I can't do it. Oh, I'm sorry, master. And then when you come back to your home, you are treated and corralled and herded much like an animal poked and prodded, all except for the electric prods, which they might have in some countries. I don't know these things. But we Let's go are, there. We <laughs> are on the fast track to being treated like animals, and most people are okay with it. We're dumbed down in society. We are told that we don't even know simple facts like, what is a woman? These things are up for debate. They're trying to dumb down our intelligence to treat us like animals, like we are to be corralled and herded and put into these boxes and categories. So this line of thinking is already coming. It's here. So what's the solution, my, my dearest brother and mystic? Well, I would love to know what the solution is to these problems. I have identified the problem, and I think that is the first step on my five-step plan to recovery. <laughs> is that one is identifying it? <laughs> If y'all want to leave something in the comments to help me get out of this query, uh, maybe in a later video I can help you out. But as of right now, I've just identified the problem. <laughs> there, there is uh, blood on the walls. Let's see if we can fix it. Yeah. Open to suggestions. Yeah, and if you right. want to suggest and come, please come see us. We're here every Sunday, 1.30 is the time if you live in a local area. We encourage you to come out. We have a large group with us today. Well, other than just magical cigar smoke going into the atmosphere, uh, blessing and loving and nurturing my soul and everyone that is with us. Luckily, they are not um, tyrannical visitors. They are actually proponents of cigar smoking, which is why I'm so happy today. So thank you all for joining us. We'll see you next time. Have a good day.